Hey, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this 2D animation of this crank shaft. Um, I'm actually going to make this exact one that we're looking at in this video. So if you have never animated something before, that's totally fine. This is a really good first project for you to try. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be using Krita to do it, which is a completely free drawing program. You can go to krita.org and then here you just click the big button that says get Krita now. You can get it from Windows, Mac, etc. Um, if you want, you can browse the features, but basically I've been using Krita for actually a lot of the videos that I've done, just as my basic drawing program that I record. And uh, yeah, it's pretty good. I definitely recommend giving it a shot. If not for animation, then maybe just for drawing anyways. So once you have it installed, uh, you want to start a new file. Um, the size, the width and height of the canvas and the resolution don't really matter. For now, that should be fine. We're just going to start that. And basically, our blank canvas that we're going to be working with looks like this. Very similar layout to Photoshop or other drawing programs. If you have you know, experience with other drawing programs that use layers and that sort of thing, a lot of the same tools that you would be used to in Photoshop as well. Now, for animation, there's two other dockers that we're going to have to add in. A docker is like a thing like this layer menu. Um, on a Mac, what you can do is you can go up into settings, uh, select dockers. We need, to anim we need to turn on the animation one and also the timeline. Where is it? There we go. We can just drag over animation like this. We're going to be editing frame by frame, so we're actually get quite a few frames in here. And then the animation thing here is kind of just a little control center for actually turning the animation on and off. So let's zoom in a little uh, on the canvas. That should be good enough. And what we want to do is we want to draw each component of this crankshaft in a separate layer because we'll be basically animating each layer independently from each other. Um, so let's go and label them so they make sense. Instead of having layer 2 here, let's call this the crank and we'll actually animate the crank first. Now for the very first frame, before you actually draw the crank, uh, what you should do is you should come down here and right click, hit new frame, you see this little symbol appears. Um, if you draw something first and then do that, it's gonna like delete what you had, which is super annoying, but just when you're starting, always right click and uh, basically start that new frame. And now we're gonna be ready to draw. Okay, so we wanna draw the position of the crank in the first frame. So we select the line tool, um, 20 pixels, that'll be good enough. Uh, let's go and just draw it in right here. If you hold shift while you're drawing, it's going to keep it a nice straight line in the horizontal position, and that will be good enough for us. So before I move on, actually it's going to be a lot easier if we set up a little rough guide for us to follow. So let's go and add in a new layer right here. We'll call the new layer guides, and this is not going to be animated, it's just going to stay with us for the, um, the duration of the, the drawing process. I um, just want to keep a, a, that horizontal axis here that's in line with the piston and also something, another line to line up our pin here. So let's decrease the size of the brush to something really small. And let's draw it in here. And then we also want to just put in that. So basically we just have that crosshair, the intersection of these lines is what um, the crank is going to be rotating about. And then we're going to come back to this horizontal line here for the movement of the piston and the connecting rod. Okay, so let's go back and select the crank again. And what we want to do is we've, we've already drawn it in the position of the first frame. Now to move to the next frame, you can either hit this button, next frame. You can click on the next frame or you can hit the right arrow key. So I'm going to hit the right arrow key just like that. And we're going to move this into its position for the second frame. So you can either press Command T on a Mac, or if you come over here, you can just click on the Transform tool. And basically, when you have the Transform tool selected, you can like um, translate the object around like that, and you can also rotate it. Um, you can move this little thing here, and it's going to choose like the place that it rotates about. And so, in this case, for the crank, we're going to want to center that right at the, the center of our crosshair, and our crank is going to move around as we expect. So to get each movement of the frame um, moving the same amount, we're going to hold shift, and when we rotate it, it's going to move in these increments. So I'm just going to let it go two 
uh, two clicks basically for each uh, for each frame. Now once we've moved it two clicks, we can hit enter, and then we can hit the right arrow key to move to the next frame. If we click on it again with the same tool selected, we bring this down again to the point that we want to rotate about, hold shift, and go two clicks. Now instead of hitting enter, what you can do is you can just hit the right arrow key like this, and it basically just is the equivalent of hitting enter and the right arrow key, so it moves us to the next frame. So we click on it, bring this down right to where we want to rotate about, and go two more clicks. All right, let's do one more, right arrow key, click, bring this down, and do two more clicks. All right, so we're just gonna fast forward all of this and basically keep applying this process for the rest of the rotation all the way around until it gets back to its original position. And then that last one, I just hit enter instead of hitting the right arrow key just to bring it to its final position without actually incrementing that again. So we've got um, 24 frames here and we're gonna start the animation at zero and go until frame 24. And let's see what happens then if we hit play. Okay, that's pretty good. So it's just going in a circle as we're expecting. Maybe let's slow down that playback speed just a little. But that's pretty good. So the next step is we want to add in the connecting bar. So let's make a new layer. Let's label it And we want to draw it in its position at frame one. So let's add in that new frame and we'll pick a new color for it. So let's go with this orange color here and we'll change the size of this back to 20 pixels. And then, yeah, we can just draw it in here. Let's make it much longer than the crank. So there we go. So now we just want to move to the next frame. So we're going to hit the right arrow key and we can see that the crank has moved as it should in this position. And all we want to do is just move the connecting rod with it. So we'll hit the transform tool. We're gonna to bring this guy over. It's gonna be easiest if we set it to the right side. We're gonna line it up with where it should be connected to the crank. And we're gonna rotate it down because eventually the piston is going to be moving along this line. You can hit the right arrow key and you see we have to do it again for the next position, for the next frame. So let's do that. Line that up, bring it connected there, like pin connected, and just drop that down so it's still on that same axis. Let's do one more. Again, bring this up like that, and rotate it down. All right, so I'm just going to go and fast forward the rest of these because we've got about 20 more frames to go. And on that last one, again, I just hit enter instead of the right arrow key just to end it at frame 24. So let's see what happens when we press play now. All right, cool. So that's looking pretty good. Um, we should just add in some more details of some of the other objects, like the just a support here at the pin and also like a slider and piston setup. So let's go and add in a layer here for the piston. And let's add in another layer for the other stuff. Let's just call it extras. So for the extras, uh, we're drawing in that layer. Let's draw in the little like pin support here. Just a simple little triangle and we can even put it on, let's just say like a, a brown little ground. Like that. And then we can add in the slider that the piston is going to be moving through just like that. Oops, got bumped off a little bit there. And we can actually just erase the ends. So I'll just select the eraser tool up here. It just basically turns whatever drawing thing we were using into an eraser. So for the square, we're just gonna chuck out some of those. And then we just want to add in the piston. So we're gonna switch layers to the piston here and maybe drop back to a different color again. And we can draw in a box, which will just look something like this. All right, it's also gonna be easier if we add in a little marker that we can hide later that's going to just line up with the end of the connecting rod, something like that. All right, so that's actually on the piston layer. As you see, it, that little dot disappears with it. Okay, so that's the, that's the piston in frame zero. So we're gonna to move to the next frame and we want to just move the piston 
you just hold shift and it'll slide horizontally with it. Um, we can hit the right arrow key, we can grab it again, hold shift, and just slide it like that. So we're just going to keep doing this, keeping that marker in about the same position. Let's do one more, just like that. And then just do that all the way up until frame 24. And again, on that last one, just hitting enter instead of the right arrow key. So we're ending on frame 24 without making a new one. So let's hit play and see what it looks like. So that's pretty good, um, but we can see that the crank is disappearing behind the little ground support here, and it's going behind the cylinder, and also it's kind of behind the piston as well. So it would actually be cooler if we changed the order of the layers here. So let's actually bring extras. Uh, let's bring it down to the bottom. And then let's bring the piston. We kind of want to hide that black dot that we had. So let's bring the piston behind below the connecting bar. Okay, and we can actually turn off the guides as well. That was these, this uh, original kind of crosshair that we had, so let's drop that off. And now let's press play and see what happens. All right, so yeah, that's looking a lot better. And uh, yeah, that's actually the, the exact animation that I had in the very beginning of the video. And you can see that just with a couple layers animated separately from each other, with only 24 frames, uh, we were able to basically create this crankshaft animation um, using a free drawing program. And it's a totally reasonable first animation project that you can do for yourself, which is helpful for learning to animate. And also just visualizing things like the motion of crankshafts or you know other machines or anything else that you want to animate.